Okay, let's dive in. Let's check out this Kraken M22 and uh, get it installed into the computer here. So what you're gonna need for this install, of course, is the computer you're working on. You're also gonna need a screwdriver. Uh, the components in the box with the Kraken M22, uh, but most importantly, if you're replacing your current cooler, you're gonna wanna grab some isopropyl alcohol and uh, some paper towels. And then just in case you want a little bit different thermal compound, you're gonna want some thermal compound as well. But there is some included in the box. So 100% up to you on that choice. Okay, so of course, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is unplug the cords, all of the connectors for the original CPU cooler. And I'm gonna unmount this cooler and I'm gonna do it in a crossed pattern. That way I'm not putting stress on any bolt. So I'm gonna clean this up real quick and get everything prepped and ready for the install. So you don't have to take the, the chip out to clean it, but I like to, cause I like to get everything around the edges and uh, get it nice and cleaned up. Uh, that way I know I'm doing a clean install. So I have the back plate adjusted for the AM4 mounting holes that I'm gonna install to the back of the motherboard. So follow the instructions here with the M22 uh, installation guideline packet that you get. Install these standoff screws into the proper mounting brackets, mounting holes here, uh, and remove the old back plate from your motherboard. Then this will install in. We will then install the spacers, which will fit better once I have a little more pressure to put on them. And then once these guys are on, I will then put these screws in place here where I will, of course, in between those two, we will mount the actual cooler itself. That being said, I am just now putting the back plate in for us to then be able to put the hardware in to mount the cooler. So I'm gonna leave the back plate and then we'll flip this down so you guys can take a look. So I've installed the spacers as you can see. We have the back plate installed with the right standoff screws and then we put the spacers in to hold them in place for now and everything's pretty much almost ready to go here so okay at this point in the process you are going to want to prep the actual system itself so you'll want to remove the original plate that came on the NZXT head here. And you're gonna wanna put the uh, AMD plate here on it. And it's super easy, you just pull it out, it's all press fit, and then you pop this guy in. We're gonna prep the surface, we're gonna apply some thermal paste here and get the rest of the nuts and bolts put together. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and install this guy. So at this point, you're gonna need your four spacers here and then your four top screws. Before I apply any thermal compound, I'm just gonna kind of take a look and see how I want this guy to be mounted. Okay, so for me, I'm gonna be using the MX2 Thermal Compound by Arctic. And of course, I will place a pea-size drop on here. And that's about a pea-size right there. Okay, so it's basically fixed for the most part. Now I do wanna get those spacers and screws on here. Make sure to definitely use these spacers. Otherwise, you're gonna run into some issues. Okay, now that I've got this guy installed and pretty much everything's ready to rock, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down. And uh, I'm gonna do it alternating, just like how I removed 
the old CPU cooler. I'm going to diagonally cross over and tighten each screw until it's, uh, you know, just tight enough. About hand tight. Doesn't need to be any tighter than that. If I go too tight, uh, you know, I risk you know, cracking the motherboard here, especially considering this is kind of a generic back plate being used for this. Just little quarter turns at a time. And there we are. Nice even spread. Each one is tight. And after we get that rad installed, get it wired and let you guys take a look at everything we got going. All right, so moving on to the next step here. What I did was I mounted the radiator here along the right side with my fans. You know, I didn't show that whole breakdown because I did some things with my fans that not everybody else is going to be doing. So during this process of mounting the fans, you can set it up however you want and try not to get these fans or sorry these tubes these pipes caught up in any fans or resting on any other equipment that way they're not picking up heat it was pretty simple to install this you have some long bracketed screws for your fan to mount from the front of the fan onto the radiator and then the radiator itself has a few short screws that can mount uh, either straight onto the case or if you have an H500i it can mount to the mounting bracket system that's along the right hand side. I do know other cases have that mounting system as well. So at this point in your install you should have uh, removed the back plate from your motherboard, installed the new back plate uh, with the protruding pins to be able to install the head here of the all-in-one cooler uh, and then installed that head while tensioning down each nut here to the head to mount that securely to the motherboard and then the next step of the process is mounting your radiator with fan let's move to the next part what i'll be doing next is installing or basically connecting the radiator pump uh, to the motherboard and then connecting the head here, basically the control to the motherboard. So there's two cords that I need to connect. As you can see, I have here the USB connection cord. This just needs to get plugged in up here at the top. And then I will be connecting the USB 2.0 here, this piece into the motherboard here. The other item I will be connecting is the three pin all-in-one uh, radiator pump connection. And on this particular motherboard, it's right there, right next to the RAM. On other motherboards, it can be uh, usually right over here uh, by the uh, socket connection there. Um, and sometimes it's right underneath the CPU fan at the top of the motherboard. So it really depends on your motherboard. Uh, just be sure to look at your manual. So it can be different on each motherboard. So just be sure to look at your manual to know which one uh, is the actual pump. If you did everything right, this is where you should be. And this is kind of what the case should look like. Of course, each case is going to be different and mine is definitely different. So the process of installing this M22 was actually very simple. I know I probably didn't give the best rundown on how to install this. To be honest, it's very simple. I mean, you really have three or four steps and the only thing that is kind of an issue is figuring out where you're going to put the radiator. Otherwise, everything else was pretty simple. Well, that's my simple tutorial, you guys, on how to set up the Kraken M22. Now, I know you guys may not be using the same CPU, uh, but really my goal here was not only to get that video up for you guys to check out, uh, but to see how well this cooler would work on an overclock. A lot of the videos out there 
use the dual fan or triple fan radiators that, of course, they're going to help with an overclock and you can really push the limits with those guys. But I don't have a big enough case for one of those and I know a lot of people do not have a big enough case for one of those. But I do appreciate you following along. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching everybody. Have a good day.